On this episode of In The Studio, I show you guys how to calibrate your mixing environment using Sonarworks Reference 4. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of In The Studio, the show that helps you unleash your creativity. My name is Nick Pallotta and today I want to talk to you guys about something that I feel is often neglected and that is your mixing environment. Room acoustics can be a very daunting topic uh, and I think that that comes into play a lot in, in a home studio environment uh, where you might be working out of a bedroom or maybe a spare room in your house that's untreated. Uh, but let's be real, I mean, regardless of, of the room or, or if it's a perfect studio or an incredible environment, you know, no, no plug-in or piece of gear is, is going to sound good and, and work properly if you're not hearing it correctly in your environment. And that, my friends, is where Sonarworks really comes in handy. They have made an incredible product called Reference 4 that takes the unwanted coloration of your speakers and turns them completely flat giving you an accurate representation of what you're hearing when you're working with those pieces of gear or those plugins. Now today I want to talk to you guys about some really cool features in Toneforge Mishiman Soar Advanced, but before we get there, I want to show you guys just how easy it is to set up and use Reference 4. Let's do it. So the very first thing you need to do is install it onto your system. So head over to Sonarworks website, go to the support section and go to downloads and download everything you need for your OS uh, for reference 4. Download it, go ahead and install everything. It takes a super quick minute to do, it's not hard at all. Uh, and then what's going to happen is whenever you're done installing it, uh, Sonarworks is going to actually automatically open up reference for measure. Now this is the software used to actually measure your speakers in your room to create the calibration for your room and to make your monitors sound flat. So uh, what they've sent to me actually is the microphone here. Uh, this came uh, with the actual reference for and it is the calibration microphone. It is actually really cool and what's really unique about these is that they have their own ID so that uh, you, they see what the actual EQ uh, curve of the microphone is, which goes into consideration when you're actually making the calibration on your monitors to give you the exact measurements that you need for perfect calibration. So now we're gonna click on measure your speakers and this is where we'll actually plug in our reference microphone into our interface. We'll see the checklist here. We're gonna make sure that phantom power is on on our interface for that input that it's plugged into. Make sure that direct input is not on your interface. That means make sure you can't hear the microphone coming out of your speakers. Uh, next is a single audio face interface is used for the mic input, that's correct. And then the audio interface is set to 44.1. This next step is actually really awesome because you're going to take the ID that's on the microphone that you were given and you're going to actually type the ID into this section here uh, in the actual installation or the uh, calibration of your room. So I'm going to type mine in. Yours is going to be different than mine, obviously, so do not use mine. Uh, we'll go click next and now we'll see that this is the microphone's frequency response curve. So it knows that this is what the microphone is actually doing uh, from a frequency response standpoint and it will adjust based off of this frequency response to make sure that we're getting perfect calibration. We'll hit next and I'm going to make sure that my input is in input 1 and I'm using uh, output 1 and 2 for my interface. Now what you're going to have to do is actually adjust the microphone input gain on your interface to make sure that it is hearing the speakers properly. We'll click next there and this is what the signals are going to be. These sounds are used to actually locate the microphone inside the room like I was saying before, um, which is actually insanely awesome that they're able to do this. This next step is going to show you how to actually position the microphone correctly and what you want to do is make sure that it's in your listening spot here. So here I am sitting at my desk and then here is a shot of what I'm actually looking at in my listening spot. So what I'm trying to do is make sure that the microphone is in my listening spot right where my ears are. So somewhere in this general area uh, is where I'm going to actually want to put the microphone when I do these calibrations. It is also really recommended that you hold the microphone a little bit away from your body. So I'm going to hold the microphone in my listening position, I'm going to step away a little bit, and we're going to start measuring here, and I'm going to be turning up the input gain on my interface to make sure that this is hearing the speakers properly.
There we go, the verification was complete, which means the preamp level is hot enough. So now we're gonna go ahead and click done and move on to the next section, which is determine the distance between the two speakers. So to measure the speaker distance, what you're gonna need to do is stand to either the left side or the right side of your speakers, but do not stand in between both of the speakers. And you're gonna hold the microphone about 0.4 to 0.8 inches away from the mid-range cone that's on your speaker. So I'm gonna get up and go ahead and hold my microphone 0.4 to 0.8 inches away from the mid-range aspect of both of my speakers, and we will get this measured. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Left speaker done. Let's go over to the right speaker. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Right speaker done. So there we go, both of our speakers are done there. So we'll click next there and it's gonna tell us that this is what it thinks the distance between our left and right speakers are. And I actually took a tape measure, uh, where is it, uh, right here, and I measured this and it actually is three feet and three inches apart, which is insane how it knew that, that's so sick. So cool, it looks good, we're gonna keep going. So this is the fun part of it, what I think is the fun part of it. Uh, it's locating the actual listening spot. Basically what you're going to do is you're gonna hold the listening, the microphone in your listening spot uh, kind of in front of the two speakers and you're gonna be moving around to different points and it's gonna know where you are and it's actually gonna pinpoint where the microphone is and where it sounds so it can get an accurate assessment of the area around your listening position. So the next thing I'm gonna do is actually just hold the microphone in the, in the center of the listening position at the height of my ear height from the ground and I'm gonna click start measuring so we can get the center of my listening position. So now from that single measurement, it's telling me that my listening position is two feet and 10 inches away from the center of each of those speakers. And that's really close. What it actually was was 211. So I'm gonna bump that up one there. It's okay if you have to bump that up. Uh, no big deal. If you have to bump it down even two, no, no big deal at all. So I'm gonna correct it there by saying 211 and we're gonna say looks good. So now what we're gonna do is actually what I mentioned before where we're gonna move around the listening area that we had just set and we're gonna let the calibration know, you know where the microphone is gonna be at certain times and where your head might be as you move around in your listening environment. So like I said, you're gonna move into this location and you'll hear this sound. And then when you actually finally make it into that section, you're gonna hear this sound and you're gonna stop and hold it in that green position. There we go, easy, right? It's a fun little game, let's do it. There we go, all right, I have done the calibration now and I am ready to see my results. So let's check this out. All righty, so there is the curve of my room here at Studio B at the audio compound. So there you go. I mean, that, ju that just goes to show you that like even in a professional looking studio, professional environment of a studio, you know, it's never gonna be flat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name this profile Studio B calibration and we will hit save and finish so our speaker profile has been saved and now it is time to open up uh, reference system wide so let's go ahead and click on that I'm gonna close reference measure and now we have 
reference for system wide. You know, what this I, this program actually is doing is it's taking anything that's coming out of your computer audio wise and it is making it a flat uh, frequency curve. Um, that includes anything from YouTube to Spotify to the noises that your computer just might, may make in general, any notifications, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and there's a separate version that you can use in the DAW as well while you're mixing. But first, let's check out System Wide. System Wide is really cool. So right now it's it's turned on, and if I turn it off, you know this is the calibration of the room that we had just set. Uh, if I turn it back on, now it is making my room flat. You have the bass boost and tilt options, which are really cool. You can either boost the low end and kind of pull down the high end, how it naturally does that, or you can actually just tilt it yourself here. Really, really cool features there. Um, you can also do predefined target curves. So maybe if you wanted to do the X curve, uh, if you're working on something theater-wise, this is what a lot of large movie theater systems are voiced for, which is pretty cool. Um, and you also have the safe headroom button here, uh, which gives you a nice little headroom in, in, in your monitoring environment, which is great. And you also have the ability to turn everything into mono or not, which is actually really handy. And the coolest thing about this too is that this has zero latency. As, as you look here, this is perfect for real-time monitoring. You can try linear phase if you'd like. However, be, be cautious that it does have a high bit of latency in what you're listening to. You can also set the dry and wet here, uh, so we can actually control between you know the curve that is your room and then also you know, the flat. Uh, some people like to do it 50% there. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and go full for this demonstration. One last thing before we hop into the DAW and check this out inside the DAW, is I wanna go to the actual, the general settings of system wide here. I'm gonna go to general, and I'm gonna turn on this turn off system wide when reference four plugin is active. That just basically means that it's going to turn off the system wide version of reference four when we load in a DAW version or a plugin version inside the DAW of reference four. All right, so we've checked out system-wide. Now let's dive into the DAW and check out the plugin version. So here I am in a session uh, that I'm gonna show some Tone Forge Misha Mansoor Advanced stuff later, uh, but I wanna go ahead and load up the plugin version of Sonarworks Reference 4. And the first thing you'll notice is right here, it says duplication correction detected, and it's been turned off because an active instance of the plugin has been turned on. And look what's awesome, if I turn off the plugin version, it'll say system-wide is back on. So that's because we set that setting up earlier in the general setting. That is an awesome tip to have with that plugin. So we'll go back up and we'll load up the plugin again. And it's saying to add reference four as the last plugin on your output, which I have set as my last plugin in my output. So I'm gonna click continue. It's so gonna tell you to bypass reference four when you're rendering because it is part of your speakers and your headphones not your mix. So basically what it's saying is that, hey, this correction is for your speakers for you to listen to, but you need to turn off the correction when you bounce because it's the correction is just for you and your environment. And that correction is gonna be different for everyone because the calibration that you go through, it's going to set the room up differently and make your room flat based off of what the EQ curve of your speakers are. So we're gonna click continue here. And now this is a really important step too. It's telling us to listen to reference tracks first before you start mixing. That's a really good uh, habit to get into, especially if you're going to start mixing into the flat system that is now created. You need to kind of learn what that sounds like because you were so used to the coloration before. All right, so I'm gonna click close here. And this looks very similar to the standalone. In fact, it basically is the same exact thing. First thing we're gonna do is load a calibration profile. So we'll click that button there. We'll go down to the load button and we'll look for the one that we created, Studio B calibration. And there is the curve of our speakers. And now it's gonna say turn on and off for a quick A-B testing. So we can turn that on and off. And it's saying this is the studio reference target curve. It's the most neutral and balanced target. And there we go, now reference four is now in our DAW and I am mixing into a flat environment. I'm taking off the coloration of my speakers and I am now mixing to what I know is going to be true and will translate very well to other systems. So now what I wanna do is go ahead and show you guys some cool tone shaping things that Toneforge Misha Mansoor Advanced has to offer now that I'm listening to my room correctly. So let's just take a quick listen to the song that I have set up here. I just have some drums, a little bass DI, and then my two guitar DIs that are going through Misha Mansoor's Tone Forge Advance. Cool, 
cool, pretty fun little riff there. Uh, so now what I want to do is open up the Toneforge Misha Mansour plugin here. And there's a little thing here that says go to back of amp. Let's click on that. Now by going to the back of the amp section, there is so many more ways we can shape our tone. For instance, we have a preamp tube selection. So we can either go bulb or experimental. We have a preamp EQ that we can EQ the preamp here. We have a power amp selection. So topology, single ended, push pull or solid state and then three different power tube types, as well as the bias and the reso sliders here. And then we can also trans we can change some of the transformer settings. So we can either do a clean, American, British, experimental, and then the ratio, compression, and the dynamic tone here. So let's go ahead, and I'm gonna solo this and center this Misha Mansour version, and let's just go ahead and tweak these things individually each. So let's go ahead and check out what the preamp tube is doing uh, uh, to the actual tone. <laughs> I'm really liking what Bulb is doing for this specific tone. Uh, the experimental's pulled back a little bit, uh, but the Bulb is more aggressive and in your face. I love that. Let's check out the preamp EQ now. Let's see what we can do with uh, changing these three parameters. Let's go to the power amp section and we'll just go and play through a few of these here and see what it sounds like. Out of all the topology, I love what Solid State's doing. I'm going to leave it at that. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the different power tubes are doing, as well as the bias and the reso. So let's quickly talk about what the bias and the reso actually mean. The reso, or resonance, is actually the low-end emphasis that is being pushed into the actual power section itself. Uh, that's different from the preamp section low-end. Uh, this is being pushed into the power section. And the bias, uh, more or less what the bias is, is it's kind of, it's the negative voltage being pushed into the power section as well. Um, you can consider if you push the bias a little hotter, it's going to be a more aggressive and, and, more, and more tight. And if you pull it back a little bit, it's going to be a little more squishy and, and kind of softer sounding. That sounded pretty good about the, the 70, 70 mark there. Let's go over to the transformer section. So we have four different transformers that we can pick from. The ratio, the compression, and the dynamic tone also we can tweak as well. British and experimental are a little bit more uh, gain driven, whereas clean and American aren't. Um, I kind of like what Clean's doing. I'm going to stick with Clean for now, just because I think that that sounds cool. And then let's mess with these sliders as well to see if we can get anything more out of our tone. Yeah, this is really awesome. I mean, there are so many different configurations that you can use uh, the back of the amp section uh, with your amp sound to really push uh, the tone that you want to get the desired tone that you're looking for for your mix. I think that this is going to really help take your mixes and your guitar tones to the next level. So there you go, guys. There's some really cool tone shaping features in the Toneforge Misha Mansour Advanced Plugin. Huge thanks to the Sonarworks team for helping me make my mixing sound flat and translatable. If you want to check out Sonarworks and Reference 4, be sure to check out the link in the description below. And as always, guys, for more information on all JST plugins, visit joeystergistones.com.